Paul Robinson from Cumbria is the next entrepreneur hoping a dragon will join up with him on his exciting journey that started from humble beginnings. I left school with no formal qualifications and to be able to take a product that was designed in my garage at home and ends up being pitched to proper venture capitalists is really exciting. Looks quite crafty, this one. Reminds me of the airplane part. It's a Meccano set for grown-ups. It was started in fun and it's just snowballed. It's been a wild ride, actually. And there's one thing about Paul's product that he thinks will grab the dragon's attention straight away. The company name is a bit unusual. I quite like going into IKEA with my missus and looking at the bonkers names that they call things. So I was quite up for a, a daft name. Hello, dragons. My name's Paul, and I'm in the den today looking for £50,000 in return for a 25% equity share in the Wanga Flange. Most people will be familiar with this type of thing. It's a little bracket. It's on everything from flat pack furniture to civil engineering projects. The problem with these are that uh, it's limited to uh, the angle that it's set, 90 degrees in this case, and the flat edge being square. If you change the material you want to build with to round, this won't work, you'll need a different bracket. And if you want a different angle, this won't work, you need a different bracket. So you end up with thousands of brackets. Wouldn't it be uh, nicer to have a much more flexible bracket? Let me introduce to you the wanger flange. Uh, you take two wanger flanges, you can join any type of material to any other type of material at any angle and build any shape you want. What we like to say is, if you want to build it, wanger flange on it. Thanks for listening. And <laughs> you've all got sample components. So you can try and build a wanger flange joint. It's a well-constructed pitch from Paul Robinson. Do you need help there, Peter? I'm just trying to work out why I'm doing this. He's offering to hand over a 25% stake in his construction contraption company. Deborah's got it straight away. How are you, lads? You need us women to show you how to do it? I've given up, but it's fine. Chooks. In return, he's asking for £50,000. Now I've done this, what do I do with this? You, you can look at, look at it. Look at it? Yeah. <laughs> That's just a sample. These look like nunchucks. Investment black belt Tej Lalvani is the first dragon to drill the entrepreneur about his company. Wow, so Paul, quite an interesting invention. Are you uh, a builder by trade or? Uh, I design and build geodesic domes. That's basically a geodesic structure there. They tend to need to be tweaked a little bit. So I was looking for a bracket that had a little bit of movement in it and that would lock solid. Okay, so who would be a target market for this? The interest that, that's been shown so far has been artists, exhibition stand makers, people building structures in the gardens, gazebos, a whole variety of things. What I'm interested in is the home build garden yep. structure yes. market. Mm -hmm. yep. It is something that is really current at the moment. Yep. People are looking for home offices. They are looking for a little bit of space. Yep. Are these strong enough to build actual garden structures that you could work in or use as an office space. The CE rating would need to be in place, obviously for anything that you walk inside or stand on. So with the garden structures yeah. at the moment, I don't think you'd be able to do that without testing, would you? That's, no, no. no, that's true. So you haven't started, you haven't, haven't even started looked at yet, that. No. You see, that's a little bit of a worry because you've got no testing. So we might learn that it's actually not usable. It shouldn't be super difficult. It's really over-engineered, so I, I don't see any problems with that. And yes, you could build much larger things with it. There's no limit to the size you can build. Greenhouses, airports. And Paul, you're saying a, a wanger flange can build an airport? Yes. Theoretically, yes. I haven't done it myself yet, but uh, there's no... <laughs> it's totally scalable. <laughs> Despite the coupling contraption not having any testing, the sky's the limit when it comes to Paul's ambitions for it. But it appears Tuka Suleiman has yet another idea for how the bracket could fly off the shelves. Paul, first that comes into my mind is, how do you bring this into retail? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering uh, whether this could be adapted and actually become sets for children. 
so your kids can actually put these things together. Yes. Could you make little cars? Could you make rockets? You could make rockets, and uh, it's best suited to geometric shapes, if I'm right. honest. But, Paul... Yes? Because of social distancing rules, I can't ask for anybody to come and pinch me. And I just want to know if this is real. You seem to be a creative genius, potentially. Like, the first thing that we're looking at are these amazing objects. Yeah. Is, mm -hmm. is that not your business, is to take what you've invented and then to sell and create these amazing things, as opposed to thinking that you're going to use your wanger flange to create an airport? Uh, yes. Let, uh, let me wind back from the statement about the airport. Uh, let's deal with the immediate things that I've already built, which are with the small things. If we stay with the small things, I'm quite sure that people will make with wanger flanges things that I've never thought about. OK, but if you could provide all the parts that comes with your wanger flange... Yeah. ..you're selling a wanger flange kit for home-making your own coffee table. Yes. It's a little bit what I said. Peter then followed my idea and talked about other things. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. but, um, but I two... did not follow your idea at all. If you listen to what I said... It's not even slightly what you said earlier on. Despite those comments, I think I'm the one that's come up with a genius idea for you. A um, genius one. And, and I think that... It is doing what you do best, and the wanger flange might then start to sell later on down yep. the line because people will see that and want to do their own creative changes yes. to your things that you do. Yep. But you've got to set them on a journey first. Yeah. And I think that is the business. But it's not something that I'm going to be investing in. No. I wish you the very best of luck on the journey. I'm out. Peter Jones becomes the first dragon to utter the words every entrepreneur dreads. Is there a fit with Deborah Meaden's business portfolio? Paul, I think you have definitely got something here. I love what you've done. You will sell enough and you will have a great business and you will earn some money out of it. Yeah. But I don't think you'll sell enough for, for me to invest in you. Mm -hmm. I think the big stuff isn't going to happen for quite a while. Yeah. Good luck, but I won't be investing. OK. Thanks. I'm out. Um, look, I clearly see you've got a passion for this product, but I'm just really struggling to see the need for a product like this. It's a very limited market, and, and I actually do like working with niche businesses because they you focus and, you know, you get a certain target market. But here, it's just so narrow. So... As an investment today, I don't really see it as a business to grow. So, unfortunately, I'm going to say I'm out. OK, thanks very much. So, my perception of what's happened since you walked through those doors mm -hmm. is that I feel like the other dragons are clutching at straws, trying to see where the business opportunity is. You know, Tuka's gone down his Meccano and mm -hmm. Deborah's been looking in the garden area. At... I actually don't think Peter's got it at all. What kind of rubbish are you talking now? He's building big. He's building airports. Do you mind? I've got a guy saying that he's going to build an airport from a wanger flange, and I said that he should put it into my kit form because exactly. he's a creative genius. My point exactly. But with my heart, I mean, come on, this is right in my space. This is enabling people to be creative, you know. Yeah. But the mm -hmm. reality of that is the sheer volume of work I would need to do to try and convert your idea into a business... Yeah is monumental. Yeah. So, as an investment, unfortunately, it's not a one for me today, and I'm out. OK. Three more dragons depart in quick succession, leaving Tuka Suleiman as Paul's only remaining hope for investment. He's already had an idea for a potential use for the product. Will he now put some cash into the concept? You've got something. If you've come in here and said, here's six products yeah. that you can take to market yeah. with my product, yeah. right? That's where I come in. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. If you ever have something in the children's world yeah. that's educational yes. that you've put together, I would be willing. But until I see what that is, I can't invest blindly. So... Unfortunately, I'm not going to invest in my mount. OK, thanks very much. But the door's you. open. OK, thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks, Paul, good luck. Cheers. Tuka Suleiman declines a deal 
and the product designer's dreams of investment are over. I, I was totally happy. I think the com all the comments were fair and balanced and they were really quite um, supportive and they give good business advice. Have <laughs> you really just sent this guy away to come up with a Wager Flandre baby product? Yeah, not, not baby. <laughs> I didn't say baby, I said children's <laughs> educational product. I'll continue on and I look forward to when Peter arrives at an airport and he sees Wager Flanges in the ceiling. <laughs>